With the batch of Cumber starring in the upcoming Doctor Strange movie, the first trailer of which should hopefully be coming out any day soon, let's talk about Doctor Strange, but not just who he is from the comics. Let's also take a look at some of the characters that have been announced for the movie, some of the cast members who are playing them, and also see how Doctor Strange's inclusion in the MCU is going to affect the larger Marvel Cinematic Universe. So in short, what you will need to know going in to see Doctor Strange. So just bear in mind, since I'm going to be covering some of Doctor Strange's origin story from the comics, and the movie's also going to be an origin story, there will be a little bit of crossover, so minor spoilers for that. But later on, there will be a few things that could be possible big spoilers for the movie, but I'm going to give you a fair warning so you can skip ahead if you want to avoid that. Dr. Stephen Vincent Strange, he was a brilliant but egotistical and incredibly arrogant doctor who had a car accident that completely shattered his hands, making him unable to practice medicine anymore. Sort of like a, a young version of House, but with Mr. Burns hands. So after the accident, Stephen Strange travels the world spending all of his fortune trying to find a cure so he can reclaim his profession. But the doctors are simply unable to rebuild the bones in his broken hands. Now it should be pointed out that this was an origin story that was written back in 1963. So perhaps back then the doctors might not have been able to repair broken hands, but today I'm sure they probably could. They can even do full hand transplants today. So it'll be interesting to see in this movie, which is set in modern times, what reason they're going to give as to why medicine can't help him. But as medicine does fail him, Stephen Strange continues to seek out more and more exotic forms of solutions to regain the use of his hands. This search eventually leads him to a strange old hermit in the Himalayas known as the Ancient One. Now in the movie this character is played by Tilda Swinton, so the character has changed from an elderly Tibetan man to a middle-aged white woman. But the Ancient One refuses to help Strange because he's an arrogant jerk. But after Stephen Strange displays his good side in helping the Ancient One and warning him about a scheming apprentice by the name of Mordor, played in the movie by Chiwetel Ejiofor, the Ancient One sees Strange's good side and decides to help him. Now in the comics, Mordo went on to become Doctor Strange's main human nemesis. But apparently, he isn't a bad guy in this movie because Mads Mikkelsen has been said to be the primary bad guy in the film because of course he's the primary bad guy. This guy plays a bad guy in everything, that's like the best thing he does. So this may indicate that perhaps the movie is saving Mordo turning to the dark side for perhaps a sequel or maybe that they're just going to keep him as a good guy. So once Stephen Strange is trained up by the Ancient One in magic, he heads back to New York and takes up residence in a place called the Sanctum Sanctorum, which is a three-story townhouse that's built on the site of an ancient Native American burial ground because yeah that's always a good idea but that's actually kind of why Doctor Strange lives there so he can help to kind of contain all the weird magic stuff going on. But the Sanctum Sanctorum is kind of like his bat cave. Yes, I'm using Batman to help describe something from the Marvel Universe. And the house is guarded by Doctor Strange's assistant, Wong, who is played in this movie by Benedict Wong, who also teaches Doctor Strange some martial arts. And no doubt Wong also looks after the house so that people don't just wander in and get sucked into a portal. But the Sanctum Sanctorum has had different redesigns in the comics over the years, but some of the pictures that have been released by Marvel.com show that it, it kind of has a bit more of a, a technological look to it. Perhaps this is related to how in the MCU the magic that Thor uses is said to be science that is so advanced that it's indistinguishable from magic. So perhaps this techno vibe from the Sanctorum indicates that they're going to continue this line of thinking with Doctor Strange's magic, saying that it's not so much magic, it's just super advanced science. Personally, I hope they're not doing that, because magic is Doctor Strange's whole thing. He's the Sorcerer Supreme, he's not the Scientist Supreme, so he needs to have proper magic. But a fun fact, the address that the comics give for the Sanctum Sanctorum is given as 177A Bleecker Street, Greenwich Village, New York City, which is a real address. But in real life, it's apparently just a tattoo parlor. So if in this movie there's like a weird scene where Doctor Strange is in a tattoo parlor or he's standing outside of a tattoo parlor, that might actually be a subtle nod towards the real Sanctum Sanctorum in real life. 
Now certain actors are uncredited at the moment, which leads me to believe that their identities are going to be big reveals in the movie, which is why they've been left as uncredited. But we can still take a pretty educated guess as to who they are. Now I'm going to put up a spoiler alert because this could potentially ruin what might be a reveal in the movie if I'm right. So if you want to skip over it, just click on the annotation here on the screen or the time code down in the description below. But if you don't mind or if you already know from the comics, then go right ahead and stick around. Okay? Everyone good? Okay, so Doctor Strange does have a love interest in the comics who goes by the name of Clea. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But Clea, even though she looks like a normal human woman, she isn't. She's actually an alternate dimensional energy being that's taken on the form of a woman and is in love with Doctor Strange. It's Look, it's way too complicated to explain all of it, but just know that she looks like a human, but she's really not. She's like this energy being from another dimension. Now, so far, Clea is not listed as a character on IMDb, but... Rachel McAdams is on the list, but it doesn't say who she's playing. Who could she be playing? Well, if you were going to cast Claire, Rachel McAdams would be a really good fit, right? And if they're keeping it quiet about who she's playing, perhaps that's because she's playing Claire and her being revealed as this weird energy creature is going to be a big twist in the movie. Now, in the comics, it's eventually revealed that the Ancient One had his eye on Doctor Strange for quite a long time because he wanted Doctor Strange to eventually become his successor. So my guess is that Rachel McAdams is actually Claire, who has sort of infiltrated Doctor Strange's life to keep an eye on him for the Ancient one. I wouldn't be surprised if she's the one who actually kind of directs him towards the Ancient One. If this is true, it makes sense that they keep this secret, not just for that reveal, but also because her being from another dimension could actually connect to Dormammu, who is a really big villain. He's like an interdimensional warlord. And you know who else was uncredited? Mads Mikkelsen. Yeah, the guy that they said would be the main villain in this, but is not named. Because if you reveal one, you reveal the other. So I think Rachel McAdams is Claire, and she's going to tell Doctor Strange about the threat of Dormammu, but they're keeping both of their characters' identity secret because one reveal leads to the other. And I think that Mordo will probably be upset that Doctor Strange has kind of replaced him as the Ancient One student, so he's going to make an alliance with Dormammu to, like, get revenge. But there is going to be not one but two end credit scenes, so I bet somewhere in those end credit scenes we'll either get a reveal for one of these two or a teaser for Mordo turning evil in the sequel. So Doctor Strange, he's the Sorcerer Supreme, he's the primary protector of Earth against magical and mystical threats. Like if the Earth gets invaded by aliens, you would want to call the Avengers, but if it's a magical threat, don't call the Avengers, call Doctor Strange. He's the one you want to deal with. He's also been described in the comics as more powerful by far than any of your fellow humanoids, which when you think about it, that means he's actually more powerful than the Hulk, because the Hulk's a humanoid. In addition to all of his magic, he also has magical based items like the Cloak of Levitation, which allows him to fly, and the Orb of Agamotto, which we did see in Odin's Vault in the first Thor movie. But some people have pointed out that the necklace that Benedict Cumberbatch is wearing in this picture does actually look very similar to the Orb of Agamotto. So whether they've retconned this one and just changed it to this necklace, or whether it's just a coincidence, we'll have to wait and see. But since the Orb shows threats to the Earth, whatever they are, wherever they are, I wonder if at some point in the movie Doctor Strange is going to look into it and actually see Thanos, because we know he's a threat to the Earth. Speaking of which, as we all know from the MCU, Thanos is trying to collect all the Infinity Gems, or stones as they're called in the movies. In the comics, Strange has possession of the Soul Gem, but in the cinematic universe, the Soul Gem is actually the one that's in Vision's head. So they might intend to give Doctor Strange other gems at some point, or inevitably Thanos is going to show up and actually rip that gem out of Vision's head, killing him in the process by the way, in order to get it. And at that point, Strange is probably going to reclaim the Soul Gem and put it under his protection, probably after Thanos is defeated in the Infinity Wars. So as you can see, the Batch of Cumber is going to become a major player in the larger MCU in the future, and I'm really looking forward to it. But there's still loads more stuff about Doctor Strange that I just couldn't fit into this video, so if you think I left out anything important, include it in the comments below, and if you want to check out some of my other videos, you can click on them right here. So I am Bandit, this is Bandit Incorporated, and until next time, I will see you guys in the comments.
Batman or Superman? Who is better? That's a question that's been argued over ever since the characters were first created. And as we get closer to the new Dawn of Justice movie being released, that issue is only gonna get bigger. So in an effort to cash in on this, myself and Scott from NerdSync have decided to tackle this issue head on. With me handling the pro Batman side and Scott handling the pro Superman side, which I will link at the end of this video. So let's not waste any time I'm dancing around with this. Let's just get right into it. This is why Batman is better than Superman. Yeah. 